we're going to go out in the woods. I'm going to ask you if you know of a place where there's some woods close by here that is not real dense and not real open. Something that you can walk through slowly, blindfolded. And we're going to play the drum slowly and ask you to respond to that, to come to the drum, to come to the heartbeat. Okay, now spin until you forget forget where you started. going to help bring home what it's all about to be centered, to be centered in the, in, in the here and now, to be alive, to be centered in your, in your sensory self, beyond your ego. This is not a competition, it's not to see who gets to the drum first. Uh, the person who gets to the drum last might be the person who's the most attuned. As soon as you're not sure you're walking toward the heartbeat, stop, freeze. The point is not to get from A to B. The point is to become the, 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 the rhythm, the sound of the drum, and meld into it, and let it draw you. And let it draw you. Imagine water running down a stream through the rapids. The water finds its way around the log that's fallen in. The water finds its way around the rocks and the boulders. It's not just crashing, crashing, crashing. It takes the path of least resistance. It flows like this. This is how water flows. And this is how you can flow through the woods. This is what you're here to learn. So stay present, stay present and be quiet, be stealthy. There's a bunch of brush ahead, don't push through. If you're able to hear somebody else moving, that person's too loud. And I also would say I, I could like feel feel people, like the presence of people sitting here. Not only because I could, of course I could also hear them, but at the same time I, um, I would say I could feel them with my hands sitting there. Well, we have the capacity to do that actually. It has to do with the reverberation of sound off of something and blind people attune themselves to that so that they can tell when they're coming close to something by the, by the sound of it, or the refracted sound. Uh, we can do it too, we can practice doing that. You're going to learn when you're relying on your on your feel, you're going to learn what's coming up. If you feel a couple of horizontal branches, you're just gonna click that, oh, there must be a fallen tree here because there will not be horizontal branches close to the ground or you have a bunch of sticks coming up. Oh, this must be a hazelnut clump. Okay, I get it. Or you feel an evergreen branch like this. And you, oh, this is, this is the end of the branch. Okay, I'm close to the edge of the tree. I can go around. Or if it's the heavier, stouter part, oh, I'm closer to the middle of the tree. Hmm, wonder if I can duck under it. Or, now let's see. That the branch is growing this way. This is the easiest way around it because here I'd have to go a lot further to get around the tree. Just gain a sense from feel. Gain a sense of what's there, how to best get around or through it as quietly, as unobtrusively as possible, creating as little disturbance as possible. It's all about how you're doing it, not just what you're doing. Yeah, when I notice that I'm not, not really present, I notice that I'm, or that it's much more difficult 
and when I'm present and not stuck in my head, then it's, then I can feel the trees. Let's say I have a bunch of brushy, sticky stuff like this in front of me. Rather than stepping down to feel like this, because I, I know there's a bunch of debris there, and there's a good chance I'm going to do that. I'm going to snap a branch. Instead, keep your foot down and slide your toes underneath what's there. Then you're on solid ground, and you're not going to be you're not going to be snapping what's on top. Same with your hands. Instead of coming down like this, feel underneath. Get on solid ground and go and then get your hand over again and feel like this. That's something you can practice even when you're not blindfolded. Just see where you're going and you see, practice it. It's so easy. Right here, for example, if I come down here and snap that, where I could have just as easily slid my hand underneath and made no noise at all, or my foot. Uh, to get around a branch, rather than pushing it ahead, tuck it behind you like this and it's going to float behind you. Mm -hmm. If you're pushing it ahead, you're going to let it snap back and you're going to create more of a disturbance. Mm -hmm. So just, if you can just lift it gently and stick it behind you as you're moving with you one fluid motion. Mm -hmm. now, a couple other observations. There was, uh, I watched a couple of you do this. Coming up to something, there are, there, are, there are two young trees here, and you're feeling ahead, and you squeeze through them, whereas you could have just felt out here and it was wide open, you could have gone right around them, made less noise, been able to flow more smoothly. Just like water coming up to two rocks in a stream. Not all the water is going to try pushing through that, and it's going to take the easy route, you know, path of least resistance, just flowing around them. Uh, I watched one of you, there was a bunch of brush up here, and um, you worked your way through the brush quite well. However, had you gone flattened down and flattened out, there was nothing, and you could have slid right under. And the, the way to discover these things is that I noticed some of you are out reaching like this, reaching for what's going on. And that's not the way you swim, right? You swim like this. And that finds the opening and how wide it is. If you're reaching out like this, you're coming from a place of mistrust here. You come from a place of centeredness and, and um, knowing you know you, you want to you want to flow. You want to flow, you don't want to grab, you want to flow. So remember that. Keep coming from your center and reaching outward, finding these holes, whichever way they are, like this. You get them more quickly and more accurately you can keep going. Uh, some of you are reaching around quite a bit to find where you where where you can go. Uh, you're only so wide. That's all you need. Just find out what's right in front of you because that's going to keep you on course. If you have to go around something, okay. But don't worry about what's beside you. It's not necessary. Remember your course and just find your way in this little space that you need. That's all you need to figure out. And we're just taking care of what's right in front of us. The goal will come all the faster. It's one step at a time. Clarity. Clarity in each step gives you overall clarity. Girl Scout made a really clear observation about being frustrated wanting to get there and then realizing this is about the way, not about getting from here to there. So that's something just to remember, you know, it's not, you're not just moving in the world of the outside, but you're also moving in an inner dimension. And if you can keep that present in your attention and your awareness, you'll connect with that much faster and then you will be able to flow from the inside and the outside and have that connection together. I saw a little bit often uh, listen, hear the drum, 
walk a very short distance and then stop. Meanwhile, <laughs> while this was happening, looking mm. at Curly and Scratch Eye, <laughs> they would hear the drums, and they were very nearby, but they would walk for a long time and then stop and listen. If you find out that, oh, the drum is way over here, I thought it was over there, gone too far or too fast. And when you're moving too fast, you're the ones who are the most disoriented. You're making up for it quickly because you're moving fast again, but a couple of you even overshot the drum, walked beside the drum. It's because you're, you're making these gross adjustments, moving fast, making another gross adjustment, moving fast. This is all about finesse. The speed will pick up. Don't try to do it fast now. The speed will naturally come as you feel more comfortable with it. And you're going to be fast and precise. Right now, some of you are fast and imprecise, and some of you are slow and precise. And those of you who are very slow right now are gradually going to be picking up speed because you're focusing on, on, on the, the finer aspects of moving. Uh, remember that as soon as you are not sure, just freeze, stay there. You're a lot further ahead by going slowly and being sure of yourself than trying to push. The bigger our step, the more we're committing ourselves to where we're going, and the less it, the, the <coughs> less easy it is to maintain our equilibrium. There's a, a really good example with cheetahs. You all know who cheetahs are, right? Mm -hmm. They're the, the fastest land mammal, very fast on the sprint. However, it's just been found out that they don't catch antelopes because of speed, but it's because of their maneuverability. They have the ability to change direction very quickly. They have the ability to slow down very quickly. They have the ability to twist and turn. So actually what they're doing is <coughs> outmaneuvering the antelope rather than outrunning them. Yes, they can sprint very fast, but that's not how they're catching the antelope. They're catching, that <coughs> catching them by maneuverability and dexterity. And that's just what we need here in very slow motion, that dexterity. And here's our conditioning. When we talk about cheetahs, oh, the fastest animal in the world, nobody says, oh, the most agile animal in the world. It's, we're all about speed and getting from point A to point B. And this is what we're breaking down here because we're all conditioned to do that, get from point A to point B. Let's get it over with, right? Hey, I want this over with. I want to win. I want to go do something else. I want to succeed. Well, it, it's in the doing, not in the results, not in the product. The uh, How each of you moved, how each of you responded to the drum and responded to your own inner uh, guidance, your own inner directions, uh, was quite reflective of your personalities where you're at on your own personal journey of self-discovery. Uh, I could probably watch a film of this had I not known you and pretty accurately determine who and how you are as individuals. It's pretty revealing. Get centered. Get centered within yourself. Start listening already. and. Go over in your mind what you've learned from this experience, what we just learned here as a circle, what you've learned, what you want to do to improve your stalking. What did you learn last time? What did you learn the time before? What did you learn from listening to each other when we talk about the experience, um, the drum stalk after we're done? Oh yeah, so-and-so is doing this. I bet if I did that, it would help me. And get conscious of all of that before you make your first step before the first drum beat and then slide into it then listen to the drum and let the drum carry you and it's how the drum carries you that you have the control over you don't have control over the drum you don't have control over the direction you're going in the drum is just pulling you but how you do it is completely yours almost all the time when we think we've reached our limit when we think we've had it when we think we don't have anything more inside of us we have an inner reserve that we can call upon. We do have it inside of us. 
the Hussein can uh, call like those. I forgot the word again. Those inner those reserve. Inner reserves, like, and then, like, by just practicing it, to push the limit further or to to gain perspective on the situation or something. Well, you can look at it as pushing the limited limit further. It's actually showing ourselves that we have no limit. Yeah. There are no limits. We create our own limits. Yeah. If I say I can't stand it, I can't stand it. That doesn't mean I can't stand it. Yeah. I'm telling myself I can't. 